In this video, we're going to take a look at predicting what reaction happens when you add an acid or a base to a buffer. This is a really important first step in calculating pH changes to a buffer. So let's say that we have a buffer system. So here, in this case, we have a weak acid, which is acetic acid, and its conjugate base, which is the acetate ion. So we have these things together in a beaker. So let's say we have a beaker and we have our weak acid and our conjugate base up there. And then we come along and we add some OH. So we have a buffer, both weak acid and a conjugate base there, and we add a base to it. What's going to happen? Well, when we add a base to it, like hydroxide, it's going to react with the acid. It's going to grab that hydrogen ion. That's going to drop the concentration of my acidic component of my buffer. And as it grabs off that hydrogen ion, it's going to make this thing look like my acetate ion. As soon as you remove that hydrogen, it just makes more acetate ion. So what you'll see is as the base is added, we get an increase in concentration of our acetate ion. That went up, notice, and a drop in the concentration of our acetic acid. The opposite thing happens when we add acid to our buffer system. The added acid is going to react with our acetate ion. It's going to put a hydrogen on it, and it's going to make it look like our acetic acid. And so what we see in that case is that our acetic acid concentration goes up while our acetate ion concentration drops. Let's take a look at a few buffer systems, and we'll practice writing both the buffer equilibrium for reaction, that's that guy up there, and the reaction that takes place when we add an acid or a base. So our first buffer is the acetic acid and sodium acetate. A few steps here. First, we're going to write our buffer reaction. It tells us to drop off the monatomic ions. That just means the counter ions like sodium or potassium or chlorine that will often be there on our conjugate species. So here our sodium ion is our monatomic ion. So we're just going to drop that off and we're not going to worry about that ion. And that's because in solution it dissociates and it's not an important part of the buffer. Then we're going to react what remains as neutral with water. So our acetate ion is not neutral, it has a negative charge once that sodium ion comes off. So we're just going to react the acetic acid. So HC2H3O2 reacts with water. And when that happens, because our acetic acid is an acid, it's going to actually donate its hydrogen ion over to water and we're going to get C2H3O2 minus plus H3O plus. Over here we see our weak acid, and over here we see our conjugate base. So those are two things we have to add to get a buffer. All right, now we see our acidic component and our basic component of our buffer. So let's think about what happens now when we add a base. So let's say we add sodium hydroxide. When we add sodium hydroxide, we'll just write it as OH minus, because again that sodium ion doesn't really matter. What is it going to react with? Well, it's a base. So is it going to want to react with the acid or the base? The answer is the acid. So our base that we add will always want to react with the acid, and any acid will always want to react with the base. They're opposites, and so they want to combine. So that OH minus is going to react with, o, with HC2H3O2. Now, notice up here in my buffer reaction, I drew forward backwards arrows. That means there's an equilibrium there, that I can go back and forth between those two sides of the reaction. In my addition of sodium hydroxide, I don't draw the backwards forwards arrows because that reaction goes all the way to completion. And what I'm going to get is this donation of this hydrogen ion to my base, and I'll get H2O plus C2H3O2 minus. So let's think about what we're doing. Remember, up top represents the equilibrium that our buffer has in a beaker. And then I come along and I drop sodium hydroxide in the beaker. That's going to, just like we saw in the previous slide, reduce the concentration of this because it's a reactant, and increase the concentration of that because it's a product. All right, let's take a look now at if we add HCl. Again, I'm just going to take the active component of my acid or base and use just the H+. That acid, is it going to react with the base or with the acid? Well, it has to react with the basic component of my buffer. 
So it's going to react with C2H3O2. And that will go forward then to just more acetic acid. So again, here you see I just used the forward arrow. And we'll see that the concentration of acetate ion drops as a reaction. And the concentration of acetic acid increases since it's a product. Now these reactions are really important because they help shape what happens to our buffer when we add an acid or a base to it. Let's do one more practice problem. Here I have a different buffer. I have ammonia, NH3, and ammonia chloride. Again, I'm going to drop off the monatomic ions. In this case, that's just my chlorine. It falls off. It's not really important to my buffer system. That would leave behind a positive ammonia. The chlorine is negative, so when I take it off, it leaves behind a positive ammonia. Now I'm going to take the neutral compound, which would be my NH3, and react it with water. Now remember, my NH3 has fewer hydrogens. That means it's the base. So if it's the base, then water is going to donate a hydrogen to it. And when it does that, it's going to become NH4 plus plus OH minus. And now here I'll see that I have my basic component over here and my acidic component right here. And it's important to label them because that helps me know where to go when I go down to the next problems and I begin to add either an acid or a base. Okay, so now let's say I add K -A KOH to it. KOH is a base. So if I add KOH to my buffer, it's going to react with the acid. So there we're going to see that NH4 plus reacts with my OH minus, and my OH minus is going to take a proton. So my NH4 is acting like an acid, and my OH minus, obviously, a base. And we're going to get NH3 plus H2O. Again, you see that we're dropping the concentration of my acidic component of my buffer and increasing the basic component. That's what happens when we add a base. When we add our acidic component, we add H+, plus, it's going to react with the base, which is NH3. And that will give us just NH4+. Plus. So this is just the very first and important step in finding the pH of a buffer after we add something to it. In the next video, we'll look at actually doing the math associated with this to see what the new pH is.